Records. Let me promote Rickard's book here. He's the smartest guy I know. He says there's two kinds of crashes. One is yeah. a banking crash, and second is a market crash. So you and I can see market crashes. We can see the real estate crashing. We can see the stock market crashing. But he says what you cannot see is a bank crash. And you know he was LTCM, Long Term Capital Management. And his question after that happened was '96, I think. He said, "Who's going to bail out the Fed?" So the Fed's just been bailing everybody out. But now he's saying that the bond market is going down. This book is priceless. I mean, it's easy to read, but he incorporates AI with finance, with gold, silver. It's so comprehensive, but it's a must-read for today. He talks about you know Silicon Valley Bank SVB. You know everybody talks about the GFC in 2008. He says the Silicon Valley Bank is the biggest bailout in world history because it bailed out the rich, it bailed out Silicon Valley, it bailed out everybody because the whole thing was about to come down. So that's why what Rickards has the ability to do is explain from the inside looking out. So Silicon Valley Bank is the biggest crash in world history, but nobody talks about it. What Rickards is saying: the bond market is crashing. Do you realize the world economy is based on debt? A bond is a debt, and the whole world is floating on it. And you have all of these people who think bonds are safe. Check that out. Get that. Oh, I don't have to worry. I have treasuries. I have this because those lying financial planners. All they want to do is sell you that stuff. Where a bond is debt, and then as you know, 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. And that's when the U.S. dollar became debt. So that's why guys like Dave, you know, Dave Ramsey is a good friend of mine. He lives has lived debt free, but that goes against Mother Nature since money is debt. So I've always said to all this use, I use debt as money. I borrow money to get rich. Now the average person shouldn't do that. They should follow Rickard. I mean, they should follow Dave Ramsey. Live debt free. But without financial education, the average person is out there stuffing their 401ks or IRAs or RRSPs full of fake money, fake stocks, bonds. We haven't seen the crash yet. It's coming. It's the biggest in world history. Records is saying here is really accurate. He says you can't see it. That's the problem. And the biggest markets in the world are the bond markets. And you have every ask any financial planner. Oh, should I buy bonds? Yes, they're safe. And the whole thing is coming down because it's all corrupt. And so that's why for all these years, it's gold and silver. I own gold mines, silver mines, all that stuff. The crash has already started. As Rickard says, we entered a depression in 2008. Definition of depression is subprime growth. So America and the world has not grown. You know, like he talks about here, how Credit Suisse went bankrupt. Nobody says anything. So called the safest bank in the world, Credit Suisse is bankrupt, but we can't see it. And so what's happening is that it starts keeps crashing, but we can't see it. And that's why all these years is gold, silver. I add Bitcoin to it. I'm a big silver bull, as you know. I own silver mines. You know, we have a mine in Utah, the biggest, the richest gold mine in America today. So I'm a hardcore believer of gold and silver, real money, not fake money. But the average person has been educated into fake. In 1965, I was 18 years old, and I went to military school. And I left Hawaii, a sleepy little town of Hawaii, and a military school has us read this book here, not the economic books they have in、uh, Snowflake University. I read this book here in 1965 and went, "Oh my God, my family are Marxists." And you go, "So I come home and I tell poor dad he's a Marxist." It didn't go well, you know. But they're good people. They think they're doing the right thing. So let me give you the definition of a Marxist. You believe in taxation, you know. And the first thing that Biden did was he appointed 88,000 IRS agents. That's a Marxist.、And、what Marx said was that taxation is essential for the spread of communism. And America was founded as a tax revolution. You know, 1773. There was a thing called the Boston Tea Party. Americans always fight. Taxes, and during the last election, when my friend Donald Trump was running against Hillary, I don't know if she's a Nazi or a Marxist, but I don't know whether she's one of them. And she says, "And Donald doesn't pay taxes." And they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. You know, this is America where you have the rich and the poor, but it all starts in what he talks about in here was for Marxism to take over the America. It had to come through our education system. 
So what happened in 1930, this after Marx had passed on, 1930, Columbia University imported Marxist teachers from Germany to teach their teachers. But around 62, 63, 64, protests started breaking out all across America. So I flew in Vietnam as a Marine pilot. And when I came home, I wasn't welcome home. I got spit on, hit with eggs and all this stuff at Norton Air Force Base, right north of San Francisco by all those hippies from Woodstock. I went, oh my God, what he said back in 1848 is coming true. So we're now Marxists. You know, Kamala, she's a hardcore Marxist. She's tried pitching price controls. Doesn't she know that every time you have price controls, the economy crashes? But no, she's Kamala. She's a woman. She's black. I don't know if she's black or purple or green. But anyway, she's an interesting character. The problem is beyond any politician at this point. The reason for all these years I've known, you know, I keep saying buy gold and silver. And, you know, I think silver is still the best. It's the most underpriced. I remember silver when it was $50 an ounce. And even today it's 30 Still underpriced. And it's an industrial metal used by, you know, every solar cell company and electric company and batteries. Oh, by the way, I just bought a lithium mine because I'm getting into the EV market. How does buying a lithium mine get you in the EV market? I said, well, they use lithium. <laughs> you know, I'm a hard asset guy, basically. But all these years, the problem has been we spend too much money. The national debt of America is now $35 trillion on balance. It's about $250 trillion off balance sheet when Social Security pensions. But the problem here is, is that every year now, American taxpayers have to pay a trillion dollars just to handle the interest on that debt. And every hundred days, you know, Janet Yellen and was this guy Powell and the president, they print a trillion dollars every 90 to 100 days. We're bankrupt. You know, that's about using a credit card to pay off your home loans. We're bankrupt. And that's why I've said go back to real money. Back then it was gold and silver. And uh, I think the people that do that will do fine. I'm a little excessive. They talk about silver stackers and gold stackers. Well, I stack gold mine and gold and silver mines. Well, what's the Fed doing? I got sick and tired of hearing about the Fed. <laughs> oh, they're going to raise, raise. And, hey, the Fed's the problem. And all of these experts out there are going, oh, what's the Fed doing? What's the Fed doing? Do you know what I mean? If you're listening to the Fed, you got to be crazy. Those guys are nuts. They're the problem. That's why, you know, that they want to have end the Fed and, you know, because they speak about it. The Fed's the problem. Fed is Marxist. It's the central bank. But they don't teach that in school because the teachers are Marxists also. They're good people. When I was a kid, when John Kennedy came to power, you know, he inspired, he said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can right. do for your country. My mom and dad quit their jobs and joined the Peace Corps, of all things. <laughs> you know, And we were kids going, how do we eat now? Because they weren't being paid anything, but they, they were volunteering for the world and they were inspired by John Kennedy. I was just with Robert Kennedy a couple of days ago. He got taken out, as you know. And then Robert Kennedy Sr. got taken out. So I asked Bobby Kennedy Jr. because I was with Trump right after the, he was attempt assassination on Trump. And Bobby Kennedy said, Sir Han, Sir Han didn't kill his father. Neither did uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. So I said, who did? He says, CIA. It's the same as they tried, you know, the FBI tried to take Trump down on false Russian charges. He and I were sitting next to each other, his ears all taped up. Where's the RNC, the Republican National Convention? And we're sitting there watching, he's watching the, the shot go past him. He's a great man. And I've written two books with the guy and all that. So he's a great man, capitalist. If I could tell a quick story that you've heard before, but this is while I was flying in Vietnam, you know, and because I believe we're out there fighting for America. And I'm on this carrier in the South China Sea. We're getting our asses kicked. The NVA is running south. You know, they're kicking our butts. And my rich dad sends me this letter. He says, hey, watch out. Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. That was August 15, 1971. I had no idea what he was talking about, you know, because Americans don't know about gold. Because in 1971, he was illegal for Americans to own gold. So he, my poor dad saying, come back and go to get a job, you know. So what happens? I, my co-pilot and I looked at the map of Vietnam. Um, the NVA is running south. They're kicking our asses. And we find this little pick and shovel with AU. So it's gold mine. And gold at that time was $50 an ounce. It was floating, you know, from 35 to 50. And so I said, well, let's go there and see if we can get, you know, we can buy some gold on the cheap because it's from the, directly from the mine. So Marines pilots are not the brightest guys on earth. You know, we're not top gun guys. We're just helicopter pilots. So I said, there's only one problem that gold mine is behind enemy lines. I said, well, if we go in quick, we can get out of there. You know, so that's why I belong in Vancouver, British Columbia. You know, so, <laughs> there's a mine there. So 
I go, so he, my co-pilot and I, like idiots, we fly behind enemy lines. There's crap all over the place. We land, and we're walking through this little village, you know, the tall bamboo and all this, and all these villagers are standing there. We took off all our weapons. We just had T-shirts and pants on. Says, we're smiling at all the Vietnamese. They're going, what the hell are you guys doing here? I said, we come as capitalists. We come as capitalists. So I walk up to the window of this little the gold mine sales office. It's a little bamboo shack. And it's a little Vietnamese woman there with red teeth because they chew beetle nuts. And I walk up to her. I say, how much? She says, spot, spot. I said, what does spot mean? And I said, oh, 50 bucks. And I, said, I said, well, I'm behind enemy lines. Maybe I can get a bargain. So I offered her 38, 38 bucks. And she went, spot, F the spot me. So I tried 40. She goes, spot. Now we're behind enemy lines. So I figured this might be my last day on earth, you know, because we're unarmed now. Like, like Marines, it's not the brightest guy. So we're running back. I'm going through that same bamboo village. I kicked this duck accidentally. It looked like a football going over the field goal. And we get back to my helicopter. And it's, I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? I could see the NVA coming. He says, you idiot. You parked it on a rice paddy. And the damn thing was sinking. It was sinking. So we get inside and the crew chief was the smallest of all of them, the two pilots. So the two pilots get behind the boom of this thing like this. We get behind the boom and we're trying to push it up. And the crew chief, because they could all fly, he hits the starter button. And we're pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to get it unstuck, you know, because it was in a rice paddy. And this mud is flying everywhere. Mud is everywhere. We're getting mud thrown in our faces. It's like, you know, the wheel spinning and the mud on you going. And we finally get the thing out of this rice paddy. We park it. We climb back in. We fly back to the carrier. And we get off the carrier. We're covered in mud. And my commanding officer says, where have you guys been? I said, don't ask. That was the day I became a gold bug. When I talked to a record, his prediction for gold is 15,000 an ounce. So like I said, I respect and trust. This guy knows what he's talking about. So if he says 15,000, I just go to church and say, yeah. I believe, I believe. <laughs> As you know, some people will get rich while the rest of the world goes poor. We're in serious trouble, but I'd rather be on the rich side than the poor side. I'll leave the final thought here is that this called the five G's. If you're going to save your butt now, the five G's, number one is gold. You must have gold. Number two, you must have grub, food. So I have cattle. Fed cannot print a cattle. Number three is ground, real estate. I have lots of real estate. Number four is gasoline. I have lots of oil wealth. I don't have oil stocks. And number five, guns. It's coming to that. Every small war turns into a big war. This guy, Ping uh, Zhi, Zhi of China, he says his goal is to take back Taiwan. And you have a Hamas, you have a Hezbollah. You have Biden took down the wall. And my friends from the Israeli Defense Forces say that Hezbollah and Hamas are streaming across our borders, America's borders right now. And you see it in New York. And so this guy Biden and Kamala could be in this. Watch what they do, not what they say. But he took down the wall. And now the according to IDF, Israeli Defense Forces people, America is now, they're now staging Hezbollah and Hamas terrorist groups. Thank you, Joe and Kamala. Watch what they do, not what they say. That's the rule the military teaches us.